reason I'm doing this video is uh, because I've got a couple of uh, friends who would quite like to learn to play the bass now. I'm barely past the beginner stage in this myself. Um, and if I hadn't have been playing classical guitar for, well, since 1974, I'm showing my age a bit now, uh, and teaching it since 1982 and going through all the grades on classical guitar, I would have struggled to play any other kind of guitar, really. Um, I also teach acoustic guitar. Um, don't do a lot of chord playing on it, really, because I really can't sing for the life of me, so um, I tend not to bother playing chords too much, never never have done, just do them occasionally. I know chords, but you know. And then electric guitar, I always wanted to have an electric guitar a few years ago, so I decided to get one and Dad takes students through the RSL exams. Don't do much of anything else with it though. But the bass, um, I got the guitar quite a few years ago now and I kind of made a start on it and then it just sat in the cupboard for ages. And then I started playing in the church worship band um, back in February. I wish I'd done it sooner, uh, but hey-ho, you're never too old to learn, are you? Um, anyway, enough about me, and uh, onwards and upwards with uh, just the beginning stages. So, um, I think to start with, uh, with a view to playing in, the, in a worship team, rather than go through a book such as this, which is quite handy. It's um, fast track book, base, uh, book one for bass, and it does teach you about reading music. It, uh, it's also got tabs, and um, you can learn riffs, scales, bass lines, and uh, chords, chord construction out of there. Just, just more the basic stuff, and it will sort of take you a little bit further than what I'm going to show you on these videos with this one and the next ones that I'm going to do. But this is more specifically just to get you going a little bit quicker and uh, tell you what you need to know, um, and then. Um, you can maybe look at some of this other stuff yourself. There's some fantastic tutorials, bass tutorials on YouTube too. Um, I've learnt a lot from a lot of these people, really great bass players they are. So, you know, do look at those. Do listen a lot as well to different types of, um, you know, to different songs and everything and just try and pick out the bass lines as much as you can. You know, listening I think is as important as playing. Anyway, let's get to it. So, the musical alphabet then. It starts at A, it goes up to G, and then it, um, or should I say G sharp, and then it goes back to A again. Now, you will notice that rather than just going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and so on, um, and back to A again, it's got like A sharp slash B flat in between these two notes, and that's because, that, that's because it goes up chromatically. So, on your guitar then, before we go any further with that, just to tell you what the strings are, we have open E, open A, open D, and open G. On a six string guitar you'd have a B and an E string as well, but we're not doing six strings, so never mind. It took me ages to uh, get used to the fact that I had no B string and no E string on this one, no high E string. Um, so yeah, looking at your A string, if we just take it from the A string, because at least that goes through all of that then. You've got an A, then you've got an A sharp, which could also be a B flat, because there's B there, but if you go back, which you do with flats, that would make that a B flat, but it sounds exactly the same as an A sharp, okay? So we've got open A, then we've got A sharp, or it could be a B flat, then we've got B, then we've got C, there's no sharp or flat between the B and the C, then you've got C sharp, and then you've got D. That could have also been a D flat, by the way, if you'd have gone that way with it. So there's D. Then you've got D sharp, which could also be an E flat. And then you've got E, followed by an F. So like the B and the C, there's no sharp between an E and an F either. No sharp or flat there. So we've got F there. And then we've got F sharp, which could also be a G sharp. And then we've got G. And then we've got G sharp, which could also be an A flat. And then we're up the octave then on an A. And that's how it all works. And you can work the same, uh, you can go through all of that again on all your other strings. So we'll take the E, 
uh, because I think if we can sort of learn these as much as possible, well, we'll learn them all, but you know, if you can work them out from there, it's mostly working between your E and your A strings to find what uh, key you're going to be in, but we'll do keys a bit later on. So let's just look at your E string then. And by the way, um, right hand, I usually finger pick for the most part because, uh, hey, I've been a classical guitar player for so years, uh, for so many years, I'm used to finger picking. Um, I can kind of use a pick, but it just has a habit of flying out my hand and uh, ending up in no man's land. So um, I do prefer to finger pick whatever guitar I'm using really, but uh, if I have to use a plectrum, I have to use a plectrum and just deal with it. But anyway, let's um, go on the E string then. So we've got E, so if we pick it up from E there, and we're going to go through, and then when we get to A flat, you go back to A again, and up to E. So that's, that's how it works. So open E, alright? Then it's straight to F, because we've got no sharp or flat between an E and an F. Then we've got F sharp, okay? And it could also be G flat, and then we've got G, G sharp slash A flat, A, A sharp slash B flat, B, C, no sharp or flat between a B and a C, C sharp slash D flat, D, D sharp slash E flat, and then we're at the octave again. The octave there on all these strings is where those double is, so your twelfth fret, and it's where the double dots usually are on your guitar unless you play classical guitar, in which case there's sometimes no dots at all, so <laughs> anyway. Um, right, we've already done the A string, so we're going to go on to the D string now. So we've got open D, again we're just picking it up from there, and we're just going to go through them all, and it'll follow a similar kind of pattern, or the same pattern. So we've got open D, then you've got D sharp or E flat, E, F, F sharp, or um, G flat, G, G sharp or A flat, A, A sharp or B flat, B, C, no sharp or flat between a B and a C, and then C sharp, or it could be a D flat, and then we're at the octave D. And then lastly you've got your G string, so again the same thing, we're just going to pick it up from there, and then just go back round again. So you've got open G, then you've got G sharp or A flat, A, A sharp or B flat, B, C, C sharp or D flat, D, D sharp or E flat, E, those yeah it, it's useful for however way you play it is just good to know all of your fretboard and that's how you work out your, your notes there so you know it's a good thing to have something like this handy and that's how you work them out um but the thing is the reason i'm just going to give you a bit of a i'm going to do another video on the uh, the key of g probably so supposing we were playing a song in the key of g so where would we find a g so on the E string, if you, need, if you want a nice deep tone, you've got um, your E there, there's your E, E, F, F sharp, G. And what I'm going to teach you in the next one is the scale pattern for G major. Play it there. Now we've, we've already seen that you've got G's on some of your other strings as well. So if we play it, let's see if we can find it on the A string. So I think rather than work our way through all of it, so you've got A sharp there, open A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, and then we've got F. F sharp G. So you could play it right down here. And that would make it an octave higher. So if you didn't want to really be playing it right down here in the key of G, notes, notes what we're going to be doing. You could play it right down here. 
And then you could play it right down there. And that's what we're going to go on to a little bit more uh, in the next video. But if you can learn your notes on your fretboard, first of all, just get to, to, to figure out where they all are. You, you don't have to know them off back, but as long as you've got an idea, and then when we do get to playing different things in different keys, uh, you should be able to hopefully go straight to the note that you need, your key note. Okay, so I'll leave it there for this one, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Okay, hope that's helpful. Bye!